Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Mystic Guy Games playthrough. This time we're going to be playing something on Tabletop Simulator. As you're looking at this, this is a game called Town Folk Tussle and it is a boss battler, but it's got some really great twists on it. Very unique, something worth uh, looking at. Now this is the demo edition that was set up on, on Tabletop Simulator. You can play it yourself if you'd like to, but we're going to play, give it a playthrough today. I did a test play. I will not call myself an expert with the rules, so I may make some mistakes, but I did want to bring this to your attention as it is on Kickstarter now. So I'm a huge fan of Kingdom Death Monster. I've got many, many videos of it on my uh, channel. I think over 33 videos, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not quite as many as uh, my uh, good YouTube buddy, Bernd, who's done a wonderful Kingdom Death Monster playthrough that's still going on. You can see that on his channel on Meet Me on the Table or on One Stop Co-op Shop. But we're here to look at Township Tussle. Now what's different about this is this takes the campaign element out of it, really, and uh, provides you a game that is just about battling the bosses and getting loot and gear to do so. And it's got this very, uh, uh, like, uh, 30s, I can't remember the time frame, the 30s, 40s cartoon style that I think is really uh, fantastic and underutilized in games. There was a, a an amazing uh, uh, video game that came out called Cuphead, and it the artwork style reminds me a great deal of that. And if you've seen any of the games that are probably considered very uh, non-player uh, friendly, like um, or non-PC rather, not player friendly, PC, politically correct, like um, I think Heckle and Jekyll or some of those older ones, this is kind of the art style, not, not the uh, content, but the art style that you might find in something like that. Now, what are you looking at? Well, we're going to get rid of this. This just talks about the the uh, Kickstarter campaign launching in October. And I am going to say that this is prototype stuff that you're seeing, but it looks really finished to me. So we're, we'll go with that. It. It's probably pretty close to finish. Um, so we're just going to move over this over to the side right there. We don't really need that there. And I think for this uh, playthrough, we'll pick uh, three players to play. Um, and I'm trying to think of some ones I haven't seen in some of the other playthroughs and events that uh, are going on. First off, we'll take a look at the setup. Let's go to the rule book real quick. But uh, basically, and we'll talk about the stories as well. It's a simple story. So the sheriff of Eureka Springs has been murdered. Uh, so the sheriff of Eureka Springs has been murdered with no one guarding its gates. Ruffians are coming in droves to take advantage of the defenseless town. Is this the end of Eureka Springs? Of course not in Township Tussle. You'll be playing a ragtag group of town folk doing their civic duty to wall up these troublemakers into oblivion. And who knows? One of you may prove worthy of becoming the new sheriff along the way. Will you be able to overcome the odds and defend Eureka Springs? We certainly hope so. And, uh, of course, this again, this is prototype, so you won't see a lot of things, but here is the setup and preparation of the board. So the first thing we would do is lay out the board. Of course, that's been done for us beautifully by uh, Tabletop Simulator and the designer. Uh, the second thing we would do is we would keep the game box nearby because we're going to have all this stuff in there, but that's okay because all this stuff's on the table. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the ruffian tokens face down and select four of them at random. Now, in the demo, there are only four. They're right here. But what I'm going to do is, uh, got to remember how to do this. I, I'm not a huge expert with Tabletop Simulator, but I do believe I can, yeah, I can do this. Okay, we're going to go here and we're going to make a bag. And then we're going to take these tokens and dump them into a bag. Now, why am I doing that? Because you can shuffle the bag. See, look. We're going to click on the bag and we're going to hit R and that's going to shuffle up the bag and then we'll be able to draw the tokens out of there and they'll be randomized and we won't be able to see them. So we start by play. Now this is the track that we're going to go down as we play the four stages of the game or four boss battles of the game rather. There's the chump, the hooligan, the troublemaker and the final fight. Now in this playthrough, we are not going to get to the final fight probably, but anyway, you'll see how this goes. So we've done that segment. All four of these guys have been put out and we don't know what they are. They're a mystery to us until it occurs. So what do we do next? Let's go take a look. Now I'm, I may do little cuts out of this just to streamline it, make it a little faster. We'll see, but we've done that. So we're going to go here. Now we choose town folks and place the counters on the highlighted starting numbers on each 
stat bar. So we're going to do that. That's probably some of the things I'll cut because it takes a little bit to do that. Let's look at the characters we got. We got the Blobsy Twins. Care to hear your fortune? Now, the Blobsy Twins um, aren't from Eureka Springs, but better the far-off town of Bifmoria, or Biformia, sorry. Fleeing their hometown to escape their cruel parents, the Blobsy Twins became traveling entertainers. Well, I am not going to read all of this for you. I'm just going to scroll to the side and pause. If you want to read these stories now in the prototype form, you're welcome to do so. But um, I'm going to save that for like live playthroughs or your own game. You don't have to know about the stories. The stories are pretty cool, though. A lot of neat storylines in this. But these are the different characters that you can play. Okay. Now, when we choose a character, we're, we get, I mean, basically, you get to gear them up so they, they do change, but they do each have special abilities. And I'm not going to base it off that. I'm just going to base it off picking three characters that might be interesting that I haven't seen in a lot of games. Like, I've seen Henlo Bulwark, so I think we'll move Henlo away. We'll just put her off to the side of the table. I think, and with her mini, we'll take her mini out too. Boom. I think we'll take Yancey. Yancey Plover, because I have not seen him played much. So we'll flip his card over. That means we're going to play him and um, move him over here just a little bit. We'll put his miniature out on the board just so we know that's one of the ones we're using. I've seen Quintus Bench used quite a bit, so I think we'll take him out of play. And if, if there's a preference for characters, I'm sorry. We'll do that. And, uh, uh oh, whose character did I take there? Oh, I took the wrong one. That one. We want to keep this one on the board. That's ours. Don't take that one off the board. There we go. All right. Um, then I I haven't seen Granny Melba used hardly at all. So we'll play Granny Melba too. Put her out there. See what she looks like. Uh, we've uh, Norman Fishboy has been used in a lot of them. I think he's a funny character. So I think we'll not pick him. Uh, we'll put him aside, and I don't know what the I don't know what this is bad or good from a perspective of picking the right characters to win the battles. I, I I don't know. I think you should be able to. If it's a good game, you should be able to win it with anything, right? And we'll take the Blobsy Twins because they sound interesting uh, and uh, very unique. So we'll just put those those guys. We're gonna push their card right up against the edge here, and I'll we need some space down below and on each side of their cards. So. Can't have this one over the card because we got to flip that one. All right, now it says, let's move them over. Now we're going to look at a couple things. These are their stats, health, move. I love that they actually write this on here. It makes it easier to figure out. Health, movement, moxie, and accuracy. Health's obvious, movement's obvious. Moxie is your action points, basically. So this can go up and down, but typically you're just spending the actions you have each turn. You get, like, so the Blobsy Twins have three base action points for the turn and then accuracy uh, is uh, it modifies your to hit with weapons and stuff like that they have the ability of mind reader you can lower your movement moxie or accuracy by one for the fight reveal the next card in the ruffians action deck yeah you can do that um i don't know that's that those types of abilities are useful in the right circumstance and i know that, that a lot of people go man you got to use that but i find in a fight you want to fight and get the fight done so also, uh, they are performers. You may purchase an instrument from the peddlers for five coins. Your instrument cannot be sold or discarded for any reason. So once we buy an instrument, it's ours, even if it's just sitting in our pack. That's interesting. And then you see slots for various things. You can have one slot for stuff of one in the left hand, one in the right hand, headgear, chest gear. There are two-handed items, by the way, leg gear and accessories. And then there's some starting equipment, the boasting bullhorn the Traveler's Shiv, and the Crystal Ball. So we'll go grab those right now. Those are here. Uh, this is the starting equipment item, so we'll just uh, search that deck. There's the Traveler's Shiv, so we'll grab that one. Um, and we will uh, getting go pa go past the table first. We'll put that in there. Let's see, we'll put that in the right hand. Why not? And that's why I said you need uh, some room on each side. And then we got the Boasting Bull Horn there. We'll put that over here. Boom. Um, and then what was the last thing? The Crystal Ball right here the crystal ball and what do these things do well the boasting bullhorn uh town folks adjacent to the blobsy twins get plus one damage on the first attack of each turn this is a weapon that they have it costs two moxes to use needs a five to hit but you see that they have a minus one accuracy and a one and it does one damage and the crystal ball says whenever an action card is drawn you may discard uh 
the crystal ball to discard this action and play the next action in the deck instead. You'll understand that when we um, do that. But the weird thing about that is this and this kind of, except this one actually hurts your stats and this one um, is uh, does the same thing, but it's discardable. So the last thing we have to do is I'm gonna back way out because we need to grab some tokens, put them on the spots for their abilities right here. Like I said, I may cut some of this out, stacking up their abilities. I may not, just so you see what you have to do. Okay, then we go into Grammy Melba. Good old Granny. She's the flirty old gunslinger. That's interesting. She's farsighted. Uh, this is a cool ability, actually. It says Granny gains X accuracy when attacking, where X equals the squares distance between her and her target. So the farther away she is within range of her target, the better she shoots. And then she also gets a lover's discount. So Granny the Peddler, this uh, fine lady right here, uh, seemed to be well acquainted. She receives a two coin discount when purchasing Peddler's gear with seven, worth seven or more coins. So she can get expensive stuff for a little less money. Okay, she starts with Granny's Cane. Let's go find that. There's Granny's Cane right there. We'll just put that in her right hand. And it's uh, two Moxie, five accuracy, one damage. And then uh, she also gets the Rooter Rudy Tudor, it's a gun. And there it is, the Rudy Tudor, is one moxie, six accuracy, and two damage. Has a range of five, says when used, the Rudy Tudor cannot attack on the following turn. With things like that, what I typically do, and I'm gonna do that for now, is take a token and put it right next to the card there. And then when she shoots it, I'll put it on the card to remind myself she can't shoot it the next turn. And then I will grab some tokens for her abilities. Boom, boom, there we go see that she's not quite as good at moving as or, or uh, moxie or movement as some of the as the other character okay and now a yancey plover let's see what he's got frantic fighter two moxie if the next card in the action deck targets a single town folk it targets you instead if it does not target a single town town folk you gain plus one movement for this fight wow so he can end up moving a lot that's for the whole fight while in town, other town folks may pay you five coins and discard a non-starting piece of gear. If they do, they receive the first weapon on the Peddler's deck. So you, you can trade things in with him for five coins. He gets the five coins, but you get a weapon out of the Peddler's deck. Pretty cool. He starts with the Smithy's Apron. There it is. I think, oh, wait. I think that's his weapon anyway. I think I got it right there by accident. The old Smacky. Yeah, old Smacky right there. Uh, Moxie of two. So it costs five accuracy, one damage, but on a critical hit with this weapon, you deal plus one damage. And then he's got the Smithy's Apron, which will go, I think, here, if I'm not mistaken. Chest gear, yeah, once per fight, prevent all damage dealt to you from an action. And so it's a one time per fight item. So we've gotten all the starting gear for the characters out and set them up. I'm probably getting ahead of myself here, but I think you do that. Each player chooses a town folk, place an encounter, and starting number emergency bar. Each player receives 10 coins, and they're starting gear listed from the town folk. So we do need to get them 10 coins. I'm just going to give them a 10-coin thing right now. We'll deal with change as we go. There we go. 10 coins each. Okay, and they're, they're starting stuff. Okay, place each town folk's corresponding token on the buying, beating order track. Okay, I, this is a weird thing because you really, at the beginning, you kind of just get to choose. So I think I'll have, um, let's see, the Blotsby Twins will go last because their support, they can, no, they need to go first so they can run up in the beatdown order. Of course, that will change, but um, they will go first and then we'll have Yancey second and Granny third. Now you can see, you can have more players, but the more players you have, the tougher the bosses and things like that. We're gonna put the ruffian up there. They always get to go first, okay. Uh, make sure the town events, peddler's gear, and feats of metal are all shuffled. Let's do that. It's town events. We're going to shuffle those. Feats of metal. And this is the gear deck. Okay. Now we're good. All right. Uh, okay, that's it. That's where we go. Now we got it. We did our town folks choosing. Now it says begin the town phase in on page 10. So we're going to jump. We don't need any of this. I'll explain this all as we play. We're going to jump to page 10 right here, and we're going to start the town phase. Okay, so we already have this board out. First thing we're going to do is each town folks draws up to three unaccomplished feet 
feats of metal. So we're going to have up to three of these at all times. These are the feats of metal. So let's draw three for the Blobsy twins. We'll just put them right here for now. Uh, Roadrunner, let's see. Oh, wait, I did shuffle these. Yes, I did. Technician and... Okay, let's see. Just I'm going to tell you what these do. We'll walk through each one as we go. Do not deal any damage to the roughing through the course of the fight. And if you do that, you don't gain any achievement points, but you do gain five coins. Now, the thing about this game is while it is 100% cooperative, the, cooperative, these things can kind of make you go against the cooperative piece of it just a little bit. Touch two opposing landscape edges. That means you got to run to both sides. At least they have some decent movement. If you achieve this, you gain plus three coins or plus two movement for this fight, and you gain a point toward being sheriff at the end of the game. And also it gives you some bonuses at the end of the round as well. Activate non-consumable gear ability. Okay, so that'd be like activating this horn, for example. Or no, take it back. Activate that's no, consumable. So if we, we could probably do all three of these. We'll see how it goes. I'm just going to put these uh, right here for now. I should probably put them at the bottom, I think. Yeah, let's put them down here. You know, anything down here right now? Okay, that's uh, hers. So we'll get grannies out now. Let's give this a little more of a shuffle. One, two, three. We'll flip those over a minute. We'll get his out. One, two, and three. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. Um, healthier. If another town folks uses consumable during the fight, achieve this feat. Any consumable. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. That means likely to do it. But you don't get any points toward becoming sheriff, but you do get two coins or one movement for this fight. Uh, nimble trader. Sell two pieces of gear in a single town visit. Okay. Gives you a bonus for trading during the town visit. Now, these stay with you until you achieve them. Then you get another one. Reckless. End your turn adjacent to the ruffian. That's easy. We will accomplish that. Oh, I don't know. Granny, that might be a little tough. It's not her thing. She's a ranged character. We'll see how that goes. Depends on the ruffian, actually. Rowdy Landscaper. Remove a terrain piece from the board. No problem. You'll see how that works. Course Plotter. Enter the dense woods or dangerous ditch. We'll see if those are even even come up with our our, our enemy. Hard times end the town phase with less the least coins. Cannot be a tie. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so we did that. That part is done. That's this part right here. Then two, each town folks receives a town event card and resolves them in buying order. So buying order is going to be Blobsy Twins, Yancey Plover, and Granny Melba. And then in the, oh, you know, I want to flip this around. That's not what I want. I want it like this. I want them to go first in the beat down order. So, oh no, wait, that's right. Sorry, that is right. I had it the right way I wanted. So in the purchasing order, we're going this way. And in the beatdown order, the fighting order, we're going to go this way. So Granny's going to get to buy first. That's fine. Okay, but we're going to do these in order. So Granny will get the first town event. I did shuffle them, but let's just uh, make sure. Okay, there we go. Our first town event. We're going to flip it over and see what happens. A secret. A close study. Okay. You've been keeping careful eye on the ruffians, looking out for their weaknesses. When the opponent opportunity rises, you know exactly where to punch. Keep this card face down in front of you. Reveal it if the ruffian's weakness is activated. Okay, so this one's going to stay with her. So I'm just going to keep this uh, right here with these. And that's her card. So next up will be uh, Plo uh, Yancey Plover. We'll see what he gets. D bump and run. Let's see what that says. A town event. You collide with the fleeing town folks, causing both of you to fall and drop some gear. The other town folks frantically grabs their goods and runs, leaving you to pick up the rest. What no? Wait a minute. This isn't yours. And where'd your weapon go? Discard one of your weapons at random. Oh, man, that sucks. Receive the first weapon from the peddler deck with the mox requirement equal to or lower than your own. Okay. Well, we're going to lose old Smacky. It doesn't say it can't be starting gear, so we're going to flip over these cards. Till we get the one we want. Oh, right there, I think, right? It says Moxie, right? On the bump and run. Moxie, not damage. Okay, well, this is good. Um, it does more damage and has a range. Okay, well, you got lucky there, Yancey. You lost your old smacky. Get rid of that, but you did get the pitchfork. And then this goes away. It gets discarded, and we'll just put this over here. By the way, there's a turn order. We'll look at that in a minute. And then last but not least, we're going to draw the last town event for the Blobsy Twins right here. Let's see what they get. Let's see. Uh, Potion Maker, a crazed, top-hatted fellow, speedily walks towards you. 
He looks for some ingredients for his next potion. He's looking for some, brother. You may offer up any piece of consumable gear to the potion maker. So I can offer up the crystal ball to get up something else. Oh, man, but on a one or two, it's nothing. Offer nothing. The next roughing you face seems altered and has... Oh, we got to get... Okay, we're going to get... Man, we're losing some of our starting gear. We're going to get rid of the crystal ball. I'll just put it up here with that. And we're going to do this. So the first die roll of the game, let's see what we get. That's a critical, by the way. All right, what, we got a... Wow, and you saw me roll it a bunch. So we definitely got the three plus. The potion maker whips up a potion and urges you to drink it immediately. You feel nauseous. Release, receive the unexpected limb unique gear. Okay, unique gear is, I believe, I'm not sure if that's it or not. Um, we'll see. Uh, wait, don't put a name. Uh, now these, these look like, oh, there it is, unexpected limb. Boom. Nope, not the shovel, the unexpected limb. There we go. Okay, the Blopsy twins have an unexpected limb. We'll see what this does in a moment. Or right now, rather. Let's do that. Uh, it's one moxie. It's a weapon, actually, but it, it's a chest head or accessory. Hmm, you can put it in any slot. We'll probably put it in our headgear to start with. Equip immediately as chest head or accessory when received. Unexpected limb cannot be unequipped for any reason. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, okay, it's one. It has three accuracy and does one damage. Wow, that's pretty good. Well, I guess we'll make it headgear. I don't know if this is a bad idea or not. Okay, it's headgear. Can't be moved ever again. And then this is discarded. Those were our town uh, town events. I hope that uh, it's gonna be that could be interesting. Okay, now we're going to shop with the peddler. We're going to lay out 10 of these cards onto the peddler's board. So we're going to go boom. And I'm sure there's a faster way to do this in, in uh, Tabletop Simulator. I just don't know what it is. So um, here we go. It's interesting that the first card we pull off top of the deck was exactly what we needed. That made it nice and convenient. Okay. Now, these items are the items we can purchase in the town board for this round. We can, uh, for two uh, coins, wipe this board as well, but we probably won't need to. Let's take a look. Um, Granny Melba is going to go first as by this order right here. She's first in the purchase order line. So what does she do? She is going to spend her 10 coins, uh, but she gets a discount on things that are 7 plus. So there's one. A uh, potion pack. Wow, one mox roll and a five heal and adjacent. Ooh, I like that a lot. What is that? The chest gear? Does she doesn't have any chest gear, right? But we'd also, and she can probably get that for the full 10. Animal trader, health, healthier. Okay, uh, let's see. You receive a two coin discount. Oh, okay. Well, let's take a look at some other ones. We got the Doc's stethoscope. It's stethoscope. It costs three mox. It's a headgear. Return a knocked down. A knocked out town folk to the board with one hit point. That's really good. Performer's bow tie. Oh, we know who wants that. Uh, the Bobsy twins. I think they can equip, they get a discount on that too. Explorer shorts plus one on town events and terrain rolls. Billowy pants plus two movement. When you take damage, you may immediately move five squares. Oh, that, that's 15. She can't do that. The slick back. Whenever you take damage, you gain one movement. Okay. Floppy scimitar. One to four, that's not good. We're not gonna do that. Magic top hat, eight. Roll on an eight plus, remove yourself from the board, return to the eight, uh, the board adjacent to the ruffian and start your next turn. That's clever, I like that a lot. Uh, finicky grenade, range on a miss, all 10 folk, ooh, don't want that. Stuffed briefcase, changing gear costs one moxie. No, I think we're gonna do this original plan of mine. We're gonna take the potion pack for Granny. This is going to be a, a chest gear for her. And it's going to cost her all 10 of her coins. And you know what I'm going to do real quick? Um, I'll do, I did not go in the bag. Go in the bag. Okay. Now I'm going to lock her card down. I want to do that with all of them. Just so we don't end up flipping over the card. i got to get his tokens out too. So we'll lock their cards. I'm hitting L, by the way, to do that. In case you want to know how to do these things in Tabletop Simulator. And what that does. Wait, I didn't do it on his card. Why didn't I do it? Okay, there we go. Now it's locked. See, it, it can't move when you pull on it, which is good. Okay, there we go. Did I not? Yeah, I locked hers. Okay, that's good. And I locked theirs. Okay. So she bought that for 10. 
because of her discount or lover's discount. That's all she gets. Uh, a potion pack, though, that is really, really good. So for one Moxie, she can heal people. I love that a lot. Okay, next up on the purchase list is going to be Yancey. Yancey has this thing, this um, hard times, uh, and the town phase with uh, the least coins. Well, because she spent all her coins, that's not going to happen. Um, so we'll have to see how that works out for him. But what does he want, if anything, from the board? Of course he wants something. And I'm really thinking, oh, they're 15. We can't do it. He might take that grenade or the hat. Oh, yeah, yeah, the hat. Is the hat the hat is a headgear plus I mean there's only a slim chance you can do it but I do like it because he's he's kind of a beefy fighter right so we want him fighting I think we're gonna buy that we're gonna buy that now things do not get replaced this is our unless we restock the board by spending money that's that so we're gonna buy that and put that back and he'll end up with two coins here and that'll be the end of that for him that'll be his purchase. And then we're going to go to the Blopsy Twins. Now, remember, he's got this thing where we can sell back to him. But I'm not going to do that this round. I think we're getting what we want. Remember, they can purchase instrument items for five coins. But I don't think this is not an instrument item. It's just a chest gear. Oh, I'm so glad I put that in headgear. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Because we're going to buy this performer's bow tie. Uh, you, you receive the stat bonus of the, this gear if you have an instrument equipped. So we'll take that one. And purchase that as uh, chest gear. And that's just going to put away this coin here. So they spent all their money as well. That That's not bad. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm very okay with that. All right. So they spent everything they have. That's going to give them plus one uh, moxie. Boop. Uh, and plus one max hit points. Not actual hit points, but max hit points. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I think at the beginning, or when you first get it, it would put you at max, but we're going to take another coin, another token to track their health. So if the, they can heal up one more, but I don't think it actually, I don't know that it actually changes their hit points. Plus one max is all. I think it would this turn. I'm going to put this aside. I believe it would give them that bonus this turn. Okay. Uh, and I'll probably do that with all their health as we go. But that's the end of the town phase, I believe. Let's just double check the rules. Uh, prepare to fight once town folks are all done. Okay, P put all uh, on the bottom of the peddler's deck. Okay, so we're gonna collect all these. And that's a risk versus reward thing there. We're gonna take that uh, and put all those on the bottom of the deck. Ouch, right? That's rough. Okay, next up, what do we do? Um, we've done all that. We've bought it and sold. We've done the town map. is all good to go. Now we're going to go to the fight. Okay, flip the sideboard. That's right here. We're going to flip the sideboard. And this is why I didn't want it on his board on top of it, because this is where we're going to have our good old ruffian. Okay, um, and then we're going to do what? Flip the sideboard to reveal the next ruffian. So that's the token. We're heading to our first ruffian fight. You see we're in the village right here next to the waterfall. We're going to hit uh, Oing and Queen. Or sorry, Queen, King and Queen. Okay, the Oing is Q. Queen, Queen and King. So let's get them out. Now there's only, again, there's more, way more of these guys that will be in the, the game. But right now we're just going to have these guys. And it tells you what to do here. Uh, at the beginning, if, but I don't need it. I'm good. We're going to put put that over here. We can look at it here as well. So place the corresponding ruffian card on the fight uh, phase board. Shuffle the ruffian's action deck and place it below. So we'll do that in a minute because we need this side of the board for the moment. Uh, no, we can do that. We don't need that. Um, there we go. There's their action deck, and it is unique to oops, unique to them. And then we're going to, we'll set out their health and that uh, when we get, uh, we flip the board over. Okay, then it's going to, I think it tells us to get the terrain out. Use the back of the rough board to hit the landscape. Okay, so what do we have in landscape here? We have two forests. So here we have these landscape tiles. So we're going to search that deck. And uh, we don't want any stuff in here. Let's see, forests. Where are those? Do, do, do. There we go. Dense woods. One. 
uh, dense widths too. Okay, and then we got, what else we got? We got the well, wishing well, docks hut, uh, tool shed, what's that? I think that's mushrooms, right? Mushrooms, yeah, mushrooms. And uh, the trap, where's that one, the trap, there it is. And then we'll flip that over because it's not going to be active. And then the uh, picnic, right? Yeah, the picnic. Okay, great. Okay, we got those out. Now we got to get them placed correctly on the board. So I think it's best to start with this one here because this goes over on this side. This will rotate. Um, and then we'll put it down. This goes here. There's the picnic. This goes here, we're going to move this one out the way. Okay, and then again, I'm going to temporarily lock these down so they don't move. Uh, and then uh, let's see, where's the uh, the next one goes? One, two, three over. So let's see, one, two, three, right here. Lock that there, and then the I think the mushrooms go yeah right there in the middle. Okay, I think we got everything close to where it belongs. Um, we got uh, one, two from the side. Ro we need to rotate that. Rotate it too far. By the way, I'm using the E and uh, Q key to rotate and the L key to lock them in. I'm using the shadow beneath it to place it. That's that, and then the shed goes right next to it. And I'll lock that. Now, we may have to move those or discard them later, but that's okay. Okay, then I got to place the well. Uh, the well is one, two, three, four over. So one, two, three, four. We're just going to move it right there. and It's good to go. The wishing well is locked. And then the last but not least, the trap is almost exactly where it belongs. One, two, is it one, two, three down? It's the third one down. Yeah, right. Lar. Not going lock, to lock that one down because we've got to flip it around. Okay, now we know that the ruffian is going right uh, there. So let's get the ruffian's miniature out. Um, that's this one. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, let's see, where's it go? One, one, two. So right here, this is a double space figure. Yeah, that's where it goes. And just to get a good look at them, um, that is king and queen right there. These are going to look awesome painted. Uh, you got to paint them real colorful and everything, I would imagine. So, um, yeah, okay, so that's that. Now we do have some spaces to put our characters around. I think, I'm, I, think I have an idea what I want to do there. I'm going to put the Blopsy Twins right here with a big uh, pullover right next to them, if I can do that. Let's see. Wow, that, okay, that, that's a little tough, unfortunately, getting them on the right spaces there. And no, just move them over. Okay. Wow, stop it. Wow, I cannot move them over into that space. That's crazy. Try to do this. Huh. Now, obviously, that won't be a problem. This is because of tabletop simulator, but we know they're in this space right there. And then uh, Granny, I think uh, I think I can put her there, right? Yeah, I'll put her right here. We're gonna turn around, and I think that's gonna be it for our setup. There's some special rules: it says death taxes and and death. These are the the, the king and queen. It says with the town saved, the team heads to the town square to assess the damage only to find king and queen surrounded by shiny trinkets they've been slaughtering and as the folks is stealing their riches. Looks like Eureka Spring Springs is next on the trail of the conquered towns. The town folks will need to work together to take down this infamous duo. Set up, appoint a new sheriff. Okay, the appointed sheriff is wary of king and queen's tricks. 
and runs the sheriff office to pick up some supplies. They receive the sheriff's glue unique item and may equip immediately. Okay, we gotta go get that out. I think that is in this deck. Let's see. Uh, no, those are starting items, sorry, not that deck. Uh, this deck, sorry. I think it's in this deck, let's see. Sheriff's lighter. Sheriff's glue. Okay, there it is. We'll see what we do with it before we assign it. Let's see. Uh, place this underneath an equipped piece of gear. That gear cannot be unequipped for any reason. Sheriff's glue may be moved to another slot during your turn. Okay, so I think we're going to... Uh, where do we want to place this? There's a lot of good stuff. Could place it on Granny's gun right now or the pitchfork. Or the bow tie. I think we're going to place this under the bow tie right now. I don't want to place it completely under. I don't want to forget it. Okay, there. All right, so that is the special setup. We got the glue. So the Bopsy twins ran and got the glue and locked in their bow tie so they don't uh, lose it. Uh, how to win. Defeat king and queen to win the game. Be careful. The odds will slowly uh, grow in your favor. There's some special results we'll read if we defeat them. Special objective, deal the final blow to king and queen with the Blopsy twins. Well, we happen to have them in play. That's good. Okay. Maybe we can accomplish that. We'll see. Their weakness, Belevent, benevolent rulers. King and queen aren't are, are, are satisfied with your tribute. Whenever an action would cause town folks to unequip a specific piece of gear, they may unequip any other gear piece of gear instead. That's if their weakness is activated. That hasn't happened yet. Okay. Whenever an action causes a piece of gear to be unequipped, the, the gear is discarded instead. Then if the coin value of any piece of gear discarded by the action is seven or more, it's called grand taxing, this roughing ability. I don't think they have that. Uh, nothing special, rampant when this action costs, whenever the action costs, town folks don't equip gear town folks. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's their thing. Anyway, I don't know if we get that up ability yet right now. Ruffing gear rewards are King's Bell, King's Claymore, and the Royal Mantle. That's the special rewards you get if you beat them. So we're in a three-player game, so we're going to have a six movement and a 14 health for them. Uh, 14 health. Six movement. Um, okay. I, I don't know if I've... I don't, is that really the, their... Whenever an action causes a piece of gear to be unequipped, that gear is discarded instead. Then if the coin value of the piece of gear is action more coin restore one hit point and immediately take another action. Oh. Hmm. Huh. I don't know. That seems I don't think that happens right away, if I'm not mistaken. Again, my first playthrough, so if I screw some things up, I did a little test run, but I haven't played against King and Queen yet, so we'll see the Royal Twins. Uh, let me know if that's active right now. That's pretty powerful. It's not on the front of their card. It makes me think that there's some special circumstance that makes that come out. Um, speaking of special circumstances, we are re be ready to begin the fight. Everything is set up. Our characters are on the board. We are ready to go. This is not the final fight. So we did that. We did that. We're all good to go. Let's get into the battle. Now, here's how this goes. Uh, we can move. This is the stuff we can do. I'll just put this over here so we can look at it easier. We can move. Cost one movement per square. We can interact with terrain. Once once per terrain piece must be adjacent to an obstacle or inside the feature to activate it. We can activate gear. We can activate townsfolk's abilities. Change gear. Pay cost two moxie to change gear or attack. But here's the problem. And the ruffians always go first. Now where are their tokens? Where are their uh, I thought they had tokens too, like a token I could put right here. I'll remember, they always go first, but we're supposed to be able to put a token. Is that them? Nope. Is this them? Nope. Well, that's the train cards. We got to get those out too. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get, we got one more. Okay, we do have one more thing to do there. We got to get the train, not the train deck, rather. Train cards, so we know what these different trains do. They all do something different. So, nope. I want to move. Thank you. Okay, let's... Uh, See, so we know we have the bear trap. That's that right there. Let me get that out. Uh, we have the, nope, nope, tool shed. Nope, 
we have the deserted picnic, dense woods, the dock set, the mushroom grove, and the well. Okay, there's our terrain types that we got out. Let's put these in their spot and flip them. And they all do different things. We'll look at them as we go so we can get the game started. Okay, fair enough. Okay, well, here we go. We got the bear trap, tool shed, picnic. We've got everything we need. We're going to get the game started. Now, I may want to go to some of these, so we'll see how it plays out. First thing we're going to do, though, is activate the bad guys. Now, as we purchased in this order, the beaten order is this direction. So it's going to go Ruffians, Blopsy Twins, Yancey, and Granny in that order. And the reason I wanted the, the Blopsy Twins to go first is so they could saddle up next to uh, uh, the Ruffian, uh, maybe in their turn there, and half. Uh, someone else get damage bonus because of the horn, the boasting bullhorn. And I got to remember these as we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, do not deal damage. That's not going to happen. Activate non-consumable gear. That'll happen. Um, and a touch to opposing lance. We'll see. Healthier. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That one we'll get for sure. Uh, nimble trader and reckless. I don't know if she'll get reckless. Remove a terrain from the board. Easy enough to do hard times. Nope. Of course, plotter, enter the dense woods. Okay, we can do that one for sure because the dense woods are right there. They take two to move into, by the way. All right, let's get started by drawing the uh, enemy's first turn. Now, I don't want this video to be too long. It's already 41 minutes. So I don't even know if we'll finish this fight in this session. But let's get it started, okay? So uh, let's just move that down a little bit right there. And then we'll draw the first card off the top and see what happens. Humdrum speech. So we entered the town and the king and queen are there and they make a humdrum speech. King and queen begin to boast about their lavish riches. How tiresome. Target. All folks, townsfolk within four squares. Let's see. I think that's going to be all of them. One, two, three, four. Nope, granny's not, but these guys are. One, two, three, four. He is and one, two, three, four. They're not. Remember, they're in this space right here. I just couldn't get them on it. So the only one that's going to be affected by this is him. Okay. What's it say? Then we go down to here. Targets have a hard time keeping their eyes open. They must roll an accuracy roll, a plus a uh, accuracy roll to stay awake. Okay, so we need to die. And I think um, Pulver's accuracy is actually zero. That's good. So it's not a negative. So you're just going to roll a straight die on this. Let's grab a die and uh, make that roll. So it's uh, we need to want to get a seven. Wait, whoa, whoa. that's crazy. Hold on. I want to roll it, not there we go. That's what I was trying to do. Five. Okay, we did not get a seven. You fall asleep, angering king and queen. They run over and smack you for one damage. Just like that. Okay. Well, let's move them to right there. I don't remember how to nudge. There's a way to nudge. I don't remember how to do it. Is it E? No, that's turning them as a W. Nope. Uh, I don't remember how to nudge them. There's a way to nudge them up because they're actually there, but I can't put them in that space for some reason. Close enough. And then they smack our good old uh, hammer guy for one. But what does it say? You Once per fight, prevent all damage. We're not going to do that for now. Take that out. And he is now at three damage. And then what do we do? Is there more? There is more. Then move king and queen towards the farthest town folk and reshuffle the action deck. So that was a weird one to get right now. But okay. So we're going to move king and queen toward the farthest. So they're going to move up to here now, next to Granny. We're going to flip that card, put it back on the action deck, and shuffle it. All right. Well, now it's our player's turn. So that's how it goes. That's how a turn goes. And each of these characters is very unique, right? So um, first up on the action board is going to be the uh, the Blopsy Twins. Um, what are they going to do? I think... We definitely want to start getting some damage in on her. This costs two moxie. You know, we're going to be using this bad boy right now because um, we can spend. OK, so you can split up your movement, by the way. And these guys currently have plus two movement. Did I not? I did not move their movements. So their movement's currently six and we can split up. So they're going to go one, two, three, four. OK, they're right. 
there, okay? They're in this space, and they're then going to attack her with the unexpected limb. Okay, now it's got a three plus. Their their uh, current um, uh, accuracy is a minus one, so they need a four or better to hit on the die. Oops, I don't want to do that. An eight, they hit. So we did our first point of damage to the villain. They're at 11. Seems easy, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Now that was cost us one of our moxie. We got, man, we could go crazy on this, can't we? So that's one moxie. So we could attack again for another moxie. Let's do that. Still got plenty of movement left. A three, that is a miss. And will you spend our last moxie to do it? Do another hit. A critical. Oh, that's awesome. Get to show you a critical on the first turn. However, let's first uh, do another hit just to make sure we don't miss that. So they're down to 12 right now. They did two hits in that turn with their unexpected limb that's coming out of the top of their head. Um, and then we get to go to this critical hit chart right here and roll a die. Now we get we have no bonuses for this, right? We do not. Okay, let's uh, roll this die here. All right, that's awesome. An eight. Let's see what we get with an eight. A brilliant blow. Your attack deals plus one damage. That's I'll take it. Down to 11 already. We've got this all but buttoned up, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was the Blobsy Twins. Now uh, Yancey gets to go. Yancey... What do we want to do with the ants? Okay, now they're ending their turn. I'm not going to move them. They're ending their turn next to the ruffian, which means um, I thought that was him to get. They got this. No, I guess it's not them. Oh, that's Granny. Never mind. They're not. They didn't do anything like anything of that's going to give them any extra benefits. Okay, now we're going to go to. He's got a movement of three. He doesn't need much right now. He's just going to move to right here if I can get him there okay uh, I'm weird about these things I want him to be facing his enemy okay there close enough now he moves up too he's still got some movement left but he's not going to move because I wanted to extend this bonus to him um, town folks adjacent to you deal one plus one damage on the first attack so he's got this pitchfork it's going to cost him all of his moxie to do it it's got an accuracy of five. He's got a zero uh, change there, so it's going to be a five, but it does two damage. Got a range of two. Actually, nope. I want them to be adjacent, so he did have to move up and attack. Let's uh, roll this die. has been good to us. Let's, oh, wait. Of course, I'm getting everybody. Oh, that was a critical, wasn't it? Okay, I will not take the critical because I was still rolling the die. But, uh, yeah, let's, oh, come on. This is kind of crazy. There we go. We'll leave them there. We know where they're at. An eight. An eight is going to hit. One, two, three. We already got the villain down to eight because of this bonus here on his first attack. And that's the only attack he's going to get. Now, he does have two movement. Um, for two movement, he is going to enter the dense woods. And that will complete this course plotter. Enter the dense woods or the dangerous ditch. Complete. He's got one point. Uh, he can take a coin or a movement. I think for the, the just, unfortunately, that's just for this fight. So I think we'll just take the movement. That's better than a coin, one coin right now. Sweet. Okay. That marks uh, the end of his turn. He's not going to do anything else. Now we're on to Granny. Granny has to end. I could just smack him with the cane and stay there. But I really want to use the gun. I, we're doing so well on the damage. I'm a little worried about standing next to uh, to her too. I didn't do this, so reckless. End your turn to adjacent to the ruffian. Uh, if another townsfolk, that did not happen. Not happen. Okay. Are we more concerned about getting our stuff or getting damage? Uh, I think we'll stay there and we'll smack. With the sword now, she's got a minus two ac uh, accuracy. This is going to be a seven to hit with her cane, so she's not very good with this. But we want us, we're going to stay next to the ruffian. Let's roll the die a nine. She got it anyway. Sweet, 
All right, Granny, your cane worked. You get to go to here. Good job. She smacked him once. She's staying there. She's ending her turn next to the ruffian, which means she gets to complete this. Let's put it right here, I guess. What does this one do? I don't remember. Oh, that's right. If the weakness is activated. Okay, so we get two coins or one damage to the ruffian. I think since she gets a... Oh, man, but remember, we're not going to get a ton of coins. I think she might take the coins. We're doing so much damage, I think we'll take the coins this time. Because we do need uh, money to continue to upgrade our gear. It's very important. Okay. I don't know if that's a good call or not. But then we get one point. We have co uh, completed that one. That is good for her. Maybe all I do is just turn them face down once they've been completed. Those are theirs. Okay. That marks the end of the player's turns. They're all around her, though. So king and queen. So we'll see what they what she does. And she's going right now. Let's see what happens. This could be really, really bad. Target. If there are two two or less town folks on the board, discard this card. There are not. There are three. Qu King and queen are confident they'll win. No need to rush things. They turn around, move forward, and restore two hit points. Then if there are four town folks on the board, trigger the after effect. They won't, but they're not hurt. So this is actually not a bad thing. Uh, okay, so they're going to turn around and go one. They're not uh, blocked by terrain, though. Two three and four, so they move up to here, and that they turn around. Okay, there they go. And they, they it says heal, restore two hit points. Oh, wait, they, of course, they're very damaged, what I'm talking about. So they go back up to nine, and then this does not, this after effect does not trigger because it says on second thought, there's precious loot to be had, play the next, okay, but they're not gonna do that because it says that there are four more town folks on the board. There are not. Okay. That man, they're they're not performing at their peak ability, are they? No, they're not. Okay. What are we gonna do this turn? We're starting with the Blobsy twins again. Blobsy twins have plenty of movement. Do we want to start clearing the board with of stuff? Or are we gonna they're right here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six right up to them where we will, I think we'll just hit him with the hand. We got three shots on our, we need a, a four better, right? So let's go do that, four better. First roll, let's see if we get a three as a miss. Second ro roll, spending the second moxie on this. A critical, oh nice. And then we'll roll this for the critical die. A five. Uh, you crush the ruffian's walkie bits. Lower the ruffian's movement by one. All right, we'll take that. The ruffian's movement is six. So we'll go down to five. Did I move them far enough? One, two, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, and then it does, of course, one more point of damage. We're, we're actually doing way better than I did in the last game I played of this. But it's not over yet. Okay, Granny uh, does not go yet. He does. He's moving through the woods. Do I want to head him toward the picnic? Yeah, because there's gear. Oh, this is a rough choice here. Who has the one to, to use uh, stuff? Nimble Trader? No, it's uh, Roadrunner. Two opposing, no. Rowdy Landscaper, it's, it's him. He's got to remove two two things. I think he's going to, well, we'll move him, start moving him over this way. I think this, I don't think these get removed though. This one might, this one, I don't know. Uh, he's only got, his movement is not that great though. He's got a movement of four. Well, I could go one, two, three, four right now. Did I take that chance? Could be stuff here. Uh, nope, one, two, three, four. We're still not gonna make it to um, the ruffian, or but that's okay, we're right there. And I do have a range of two, right? So one, no, let's move right to here. We are adjacent to them and we got a range of two on our pitchfork. So we're gonna roll that, we need a five, uh, five. We need a five or better to hit. Let's roll. Do another crit, that'd be a, a one. Is a miss, boosh, we missed. And that took all of his moxie to do, so that's that's all he does. Okay, that's his turn. Now we're going to Granny Melba, and I know what she's doing. She wants to be one, two. Her pistol has a range of what? 
Range five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So she one, two, three, four, five. Okay. She's gonna be here. And she's gonna shoot her pistol from right here. She moved there. I can move more afterwards, but she's gonna shoot her pistol. Uh as gonna give her um she's a six, but remember Normally she's a minus two, but she is going to go one, two, three, four, five. She's a adds take adds three, so she needs a three or better to hit with her pistol at this range. Another critical! Oh my gosh! And she just did two points. Man, I'm getting lucky on this, guys. Really, this these do not go this easy. This is the easiest it's gone. This did not go that easy in my test play, and we got another critical, a two or three. Uh, your hit, uh, your hit leaves the ruffian flustered. Their anger makes them predictable. Reveal the next ruffian action. Of course, I don't know that that's that helpful since it's the end of the round. But what do we do? Target, target the town folks with the most owned gear. Move the target, move towards the target. Uh, king and queen, reach them. Deal one damage. If there are three or more town folks. We're gonna do this. So, um, she still had. She moved two she was right here she only moved one so she's still got two movement left one two that did help to see that card with the critical did i do the damage uh i did do the damage right the healed yep i don't know that i did uh, okay i've lost track did i do the damage from the critical i don't remember I don't know that I did the damage from her gun. I think, well, I would say I did because this is going way easy. We're at six right now. Okay, I don't remember, I, th I forgot. All right, that is going to mark the end of the turn. So um, the reason I did that is actually, she does not have the most gear. It's well, one. It's the Blobsy twins. So um, on their turn, they're just gonna spin around and hit the Blobsy twins right there for one. Lobsy twins take a damage. Oh no! They're at four. And then uh, what else did they do? So that was it. Spun around did a damage of after effect. If there are three or more town folks, there are. King puts an extra oomph into his poke. The violent jab flings the gear right off your body. The target unequips half of their gear rounded down. Oh my gosh! Now the thing I'm not sure about because that seems awfully ridiculous is do they lose that gear does this really make them lose that gear and the reason i say that is because of this uh, i'm going to look that up ruffian ability i'm going to look that up in here real quick um let's see is there a ruffian page i think there is the ruffians turn oh, oh. the ruffians Ruffian ability, depending on when you encounter Ruffian, their abilities, Ruffians reveal town maps, their abilities will be shown underneath the ranges from the field. Okay, so let me make sure. Oh, underneath, this ranges from chump to final fight. So there should be something that tells me when, right? Um, it doesn't. Whenever an action causes a ruffian grand taxing, when does this happen? When does that ability happen? Because see, right now they are the chump, or the the yeah, the chump, and um, I don't know. I don't think that would happen. To say on the front, chump, regular rules, nothing special about this do. Is there a bell somewhere that would identify? There's no bell. I don't know, guys. Help me out. Help me understand this one. If you played this game before, should I be using that ability? That seems like that's really disgusting. It seems like it would be something more in these higher level fights to me. Um, but we're going to discard half our gear rounded down. So we know we don't have to discard that. Um, so we got one, two, three, four gear. So we have to discard two. I can't discard either of these two, so I guess we'll discard the shiv and the boasting horn. Well, wait a second. This says 
place this card underneath an equipped piece of gear. The gear cannot be unequipped for any reason. Okay. So I don't think I can apply the unequipped to that and not have it happen. So these are unequipped right now. They're in our stuff. Now the thing that I don't know is whether or not I have to get rid of them or can I re-equip them for two coins. It says they go flying, or two moxie rather. Uh, the target unequipped their gear, half their gear rounded down. Okay, well we did it. I'm gonna put them off to the side for the moment and I'll, I'll see if I can figure that out. I don't know. I just don't know when this ability triggers because if that's right now, then these would go away uh, and neither of them would give a health back to the, the bad guys. But um, I don't know, man. It doesn't say when. I'm, let's look at another guy and see if it actually says. Let's take a look. Uh, no special ability there, so we'll just not do that one. Let's see. Huh. Well, here's a roughing ability. Quick chug. Take two actions, but when do they get that? Okay, let's take a look at the rules one more time. See if we can figure that out. Roughing ability. Roughing gains corresponding ability shown in the roughing card for the entirety of the fight. Their ability level will be shown underneath. Underneath what? This is, oh, this is if they're, if they're the final fight. Okay, got it. Never mind. These are their abilities. That's their final fight ability. Oh, God, I'm glad I figured that out. Okay, got it. That's their final fight ability, guys. Not to worry. Now, by the way, I did move through the dense forest. It just costs two movements for us, but it doesn't affect the ruffian. Okay, anyway, that completes this card. We've completed that card. Now it's back to our turn. We've had some bad stuff happen. Um, our main character has no weapons. We need to get weapons. So I think they're going to take off to get some help. Um, and they are up first. They have a big movement, so I think we're going to move them toward the tool shed. They have a six, right? Six movement? Seven. Six movement, yeah. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. They're going to stop there and set this trap for two moxie. One to th we got to roll to see if we can set the trap. Let's get a die and roll it. A seven. So four plus, uh, you set the trap. If the ruffian moves on top of the bear trap for any reason, they immediately take two damage and lose two movement. And the bear trap is deactivated. So we activated that, that's five, six. So they're heading over to there. Not a great turn for them, but that's okay. Now we're gonna go with our big guy. Uh, he's gonna st stay right where he's at and hit him with the pitchfork for two moxie. He needs a Five. Five or better. Let's hope we can get it. Let's get another critical. That'd be nice. An eight. That's damage. And the pitchfork does two. That's outstanding. One, two. They're at four already. And we haven't moved yet. We haven't moved yet. Oh, um, yeah. I just want to remember this for her. She can't use this this turn. Let's see. Uh. One, two, three, four. Three? I got to look how many movement he's got. He's got three or four. He's got four. Don't he have some way to get extra? If there isn't a card, if there, the next card in the action deck targets a sink, that hasn't happened yet. While in the town, uh, other townsfolks may pay five coins. That Nope. I thought he had something. I guess that was an item, right? Oh, uh, this one. On a roll of eight plus, remove yourself from the board. Okay, we can do that. We're not, that's what we'll do. We'll run over and get that and then we'll see if we can get that ability. Now, Granny, she doesn't have that much movement and she's not gonna be able to hit him. Just uh, this, this, an adjacent character to heal damage. I think he does have damage on him, doesn't he? He does. All right, Granny, we're gonna move you. Can you get there though? You only have, I doubt it. Let's see, she has a movement of four. One, two, three, four. She can't get there. She'll move to here. 
Just trying to stick with him a little bit. God, that's really a wasted turn. Uh, but we uh, ended our turn. She got two moxies. She can't really do anything else, so she'll just she'll just take this off. Boom. That's it. All right. That is the end of the round for the characters. You can see that some rounds are now. We're starting to see how this game plays out. All right. Uh, Supreme Serenade. Queen whispers sweet nothings into King's ears. He's all fired up. Target the closest town, folks. That's going to be um, him. Uh, whatever his name is. Got to get remember their names. Fin Yancey. Yancey. Move towards the, the target. Then if there are three plus town folks on the board, trigger the effect. If not, King menace menacingly stares, uh, stares at the target while... Uh, target down while taking in Queen's Whispers. You're glad you can't hear it. We're going to take this after effect. It's invigorated and begins swinging wildly. Draw the next card from the action deck. All targets in the action, all targets in that action immediately take dumb, take one damage. Then that action is played. Okay. So that's good. He's not going to get too much out of this. He's just going to move right to there. Grr. He's angered. If there's three more, we're going to take the after effect. He's invigorated and begins swinging wildly. Draw the next card from the action deck. Okay, and he does one damage to everybody near him, so that's going to be Yancey again. Yancey is taking... Oh, he doesn't have a lot of health left. This could be bad. Um, wait, 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 wait. His ability might trigger now. We did not use any moxie. Two moxie if the next card in the action deck targets a single town folk. If it targets you instead. Okay, that actually happened. He got targeted anyway. It does not target a single town folk you gain. If it does not target a single town folk, you gain one movement. We probably should have had one movement for this fight already, huh? Target closest town folk. Target. Okay, I guess not. We'll leave it at that. Target weakest town folk. Weakest town folk, I think, is currently him. Yeah, it is. Because he's got the weakest health. Yep. That sucks. Don't go down, Yancey. That'd be bad. Uh, you need to take off some of this heavy gear. The target may choose to unequip a piece of gear. If they do not, king and gain, queen gain two movement. Well, since we knocked their movement down already, we'll give them back the movement. I don't want to lose the gear. And that's the effect of that card. Uh, plus, we also take another. We took the damage already, right? Uh, nope. we got to take one more damage. Okay. Ooh, he's hurting. But we're going to heal him, so it's okay. All right. Um... That's it for the for king and queen. Next up, we got the Blobsy twins. They're going to go one, two, three. And they're going to activate the tool shed. Uh, it takes one moxie to search the tool shed. Let's get a die. We got one right here. Okay, come on. Roll good. Roll good. A nine. Perfect. Let's see. What's this do? You find something that might be useful. Receive the first one-handed weapon from the peddler's deck. You may equip it immediately. Tool shed is no longer active. Okay, so let's see. Shoulder pads? Nope. Flinging stones. Let's just double check that. First one-handed weapon. Yep, okay. That's what they get. They got the flinging stones. Uh, it's got a range of three. Okay. Well, we moved one, two, three, four. So we got two movement. We'll go five, six. We're not within three range, but we did get something. So there we go. And that is it for them. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, that marks the end of their turn. So next we'll go to Yancey. He's going to move back to one, two, to right here. Okay, it's right there. And he's going to stab with his pitchfork because it's got a range of two. He's a five or better. Let's see if he can get it. Six. Success. He does two points of damage. Look at how close we are to winning this fight. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, that is that. And then, what else? Is he going to move anymore? So he did that. He poked. No, he's going to stay there because he wants her to heal him. All right. That's the end of his action. Now we are going to Granny. Granny is going to spend one of her moxie, which means she's not going to be able to shoot her gun this turn, 
to roll up. She's going to spend both of them to try and heal him up twice. We'll see what happens. Um, come on, five or better. Uh, one, no. So that failed. Roll again. Come on, come on. A three. She did not succeed at either of those. That's really bad. She's just going to go one, two, three, back to there. One, two, three, four, five, six. She'll move her whole movement back. Okay. God, that was not a, a, what I was hoping for this turn. I could have killed him. But they're going to, king and queen are going to get to go again. I guess we're going to finish this fight in this episode. It has been an hour and ten minutes, so it's not too bad. Royal Dispute. King and queen seem to be bickering with each other. A lover's quarrel, perhaps? Target all town folks within two squares. That is only Yancey. Um, all targets take one damage from a stray fist. Move king and queen toward the farthest town folk. After effect, your gear comes loose. Unequip two pieces of gear. That's after they move, so I don't think they're going to get to anybody. Um, hold on. Within two. Is he within two? One, two. No, he's three away. He's three away, so this does not happen. All targets take one damage. All targets within town, two squares. Take one damage from a stray fist. Then move king, queen toward the far list. That's going to be... Yeah, definitely. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I can lure them into the trap. And they didn't they're not within range, so that last ability is not going to happen. Okay. Man, they, they haven't unequipped unequipped a lot of gear. Only the main only our two folks here. That's not too terribly bad. Might be bad for the next fight though, because I don't know if we get to keep that gear or not. I gotta. No, we do. We do get to keep that gear. They can re-equip it. That was uh, that's their last stand ability or last fight ability. So yeah, we're good. All right, maybe we can get them to come over the trap. Anyway, that means that uh, it is back around to our turns. Um, I think I played this right, but you're gonna tell me if I didn't. First play, guys. So remember that uh, they are going to go. Just move right up to here. And they're going to use their new toy, the Flinging Stones. It's got a range of three, needs a six. They have a minus one, so they're going to need a seven to hit, and they will do one damage. But if I can get him to run over the trap, it, he will die. A five. That is going to miss. So zing, nothing happens there. Okay. Um, he is still hurt. He is going to go one, two, no. Forget that. One, two, three, four. He's heading up toward the picnic basket. Uh, and can he do anything? You know, I could have stopped. Well, he can stop the last hit. He's got to get up there. He hasn't even been able to use that yet, but that's okay. Uh, has he been able to do anything else? Enter the town phase with least coins, remove a train. No, he hasn't done that. He's going to try and do that with this because I think that gets removed. All right, that's his turn. Then Granny is going to move four. Hopefully she gets in with range five. One, one, two, three. I think she can. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. She can do it. She's going to shoot her gun. Granny, get your gun. She's going to need a three or better to hit. And that'll do in the ruffian if we succeed. A six. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, you know what? I really wanted, I wanted them to do it, but we're not going to get that. So she does two hits. Boom. Didn't mean to do that. They are kaput. We have killed king and queen. So what happens when we win? So we have toppled them over. They weren't that bad. I uh, expected worse. I think we got some really lucky rolls on that stuff. It was some really good stuff. Okay, let's uh, go to the next page. Defeating uh, next page. Defeating the ruffian. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, combat victory. Okay. Critical hits. Yep. Yep. Defeating the ruffian. What happens next? The rules are very clear on this. If ruffians hit, hit points will go below one, they're defeated. The fight is over. Upon defeating the ruffian, the town folks will do the following. Town folks may discard any un unaccomplished feats they do not want. They re receive six coins. Search their multiple mutilated corpses for goodies. Each ruffian has their own three piece ruffian deck. They are listed the body of the roughing card. The town folks who achieve the most feats uh, this round receives one of those these randomly. Okay. So let's start at the top. We did that so we can get rid of any 
feats that we don't want that we haven't succeeded at. So for them, they have all three. I think I'm going to get rid of this one. This one just doesn't seem very valuable. We'll discard that. Don't want to discard the others. Activate a non. I think that's okay. In fact, we didn't do that, but I think we will. So I'm going to keep that one. Touch opposing landscapes. That's pretty good. I think I'll keep that one too. We'll just draw one more. Okay. We'll go round it out. Let's see what we get. Martyr. Be the first to get knocked out in a fight. Okay. Don't like that one too much. Healthier. That one I'm pretty confident we will get during these fights. Sell two pieces of gear in a single town visit. We'll keep that and just draw one because she succeeded in getting one. What does she get? Let's see. What does she get here? Cocky marksman. Oh, land a critical hit with a ranged attack. That's a great one for her. I love that. And then um, Yancey also gets a new one. Okay. Trained sprinter. Move six squares in a straight line, a single turn. Well, there's a lot of potential for him to do that. Um, so that is okay. I haven't adjusted their stats yet because it didn't say so. So let's see. What do we do next? Uh, each town folk gains six coins. Not a problem. Let's gain six coins. Five, six. So you see that uh, for the Blobsy twins, this six coins is all they're going to have to spend. Okay, unless they sell something, which they might. I think they'll spell, sell the little range weapon they got. Uh, search the mutilated corpse for goodies. Okay, they each got three special goodies. And that's going to be in here. Let's uh, get those out on the table. Um, King Claymore, King Queen's Bell. And the Royal Mantle are the three from this. We'll stack them all up. And now I have a choice because both of these guys, both of these characters completed one of their achievements. And I think they're both worth one point, right? Yep. So we'll see who, get, we'll see who gets it. I don't think I have to choose until I draw. But let's uh, shuffle it up and draw the first one. See what we get. We'll put the other. The Royal Mantle. Okay. Uh, what does it do? For It gives you one extra hit point, and then one mox, select an adjacent town person, person, place them adjacent to you at the end of your turn. Also, you can carry them along with you. Who does not have chest gear? They both do. Oh, I don't like this at all. The smithy apron's too good. The potion thing's too good, I think. He'll take it, because this is a... Once per fight item. He'll take that. I'm not going to equip it quite yet. I may equip it before the fight. I think we get to make that choice if we want to. Okay, uh, we did that. And then we go um, restore the town folks stat to their... Um... Oh, we didn't read the effect, right? For defeating... Uh, oh, that's in the final fight. So we're not going to... We wouldn't read that now. That's the final fight. Okay. Uh, defeating the ruffians. Restore each town folks stats. We're going to do that, except for on these guys, because their stat points came from this. So she's all back. She's at normal anyway. He gains that, and then that's gone. And wait, I think they did take a damage right now. So let's take that off. Okay. Stats are restored. Rotate the town folk order on the buying bar. The town folk to the top moves to the bottom. Okay. So Granny Melba is now on top, and the Blopsy twins are on the bottom. Okay, uh, return to town to recuperate, flip the board, and begin the next town phase. Okay, so let's flip these. We're done with king and queen. I think I got it mostly right. We'll see. Boop. Uh, we'll get rid of this. We'll flip the town board and get ready to do the next town phase. So I think this is a good place to end it. We'll save our game here, and we'll come back to it another time and see if we play the next ruffian. Um, I think this gives you a great idea how the game works. Uh, it's got uh, a nice, simple elegance to it, and it streamlines what um, some people might find cumbersome in a game like Kingdom Death Monster, where it's a big epic campaign that, that you go and build your settlement and everything. This is so much simpler if you just want to go have some fun fighting some weird, crazy bosses with weird abilities. That's great. All right, but anyway, guys, thanks for like, sharing, and subscribing. I hope that you liked this uh, digital playthrough of um, town 
Township or Townfolk Tussle. And I will see you in the next video of something. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.